All right, let's get started. So quick uh, agenda review. Does anyone have anything that they want to change, modify, add uh, to the agenda, remove from the agenda? Happy with the agenda. Once, twice, three times. All right, looks like we're good. Uh, so I've decided to, instead of doing full introductions now, just um, if folks, the first time you talk during the meeting, introduce your, just say your name, uh, and then folks can then go to the meeting notes and see like who you're affiliated with. That gives us just a little bit more time because we're always sort of coming up the edge like that. Um, but at least that way people know who is talking. I always laugh because I look at the CNC F videos and they don't have any descriptions, no links to the particular working group that's that's having the meeting. Uh, no link to their meeting notes and no description of who the people are. So you always have to like dig around and do a, a search for everything. All right, uh, so jumping into it, uh, let me uh, share my screen. All right, so folks should see uh, the meeting notes. And again, don't forget to put your uh, name and the attendees there. Um, so Vadim couldn't make it today, so he's got a couple of notes here that he wanted to make us aware of. Uh, 4.7 stable was released last week. Um, he's focusing on 4.8 nightlies now, the stability, uh, and fixing the 4.7 to 4.8 upgrade issues to promote 4.8 to stable. And uh, Mustafa is tackling uh, that uh, right there, which needs load this up. SE Linux expertise. Is closed not a bug? What do we have here? After OKD has updated to Fedora, SE Linux policy 399. On four, two Kubernetes tests start failing. And in essence, uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, so SE Linux, um, looks like this is a conversation on different perceptions of how this should be implemented for months. Um, check this out uh, if folks want to um, have a conver larger conversation about that, we can do so. Um, but uh, Vadim did want to bring it to our in uh, attention, and Mustafa is tackling that one. Is it something that we need to reach out to Dan Walsh about? He did put that comment in there and... It looks like there was a response, but he hasn't responded yet. Okay. So let's let's wait to see what his response is. Um, and... Sorry, oh, but just... does anyone know who JSA Frain is at redhat.com? I don't know that, recognize that email address. To look that one up. Right. Um, uh, Timothy says no major notices, so no no updates, no major updates. It seems. Yeah, we don't uh, have anything specific happening. Well, it's it's summer, so things are going slowly. Uh, but uh, yeah, nothing major happening on the request side so far. And a little bit about doc stuff. So um, uh, let's see. I didn't take a quick look and see uh, who's on here. Is Brian on? He is. Oh yeah, Brian. You want to go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the path forward that we've decided to take uh, in terms of the new site. Yeah, sure. So um, <clears throat> we've been having a number of discussions in the um, docs working group about the OKD.io site, um, what it's for, what it should be for. Um, one of the challenges is it's not easy to update. Um, the technology um, that, that's being used um, means you need to be really a full web front end developer to be able to add content. And as, the, as our community front door, we thought that that's not really where we want to be. So we're exploring a technology called MKDocs, which allows you to write pure markdown 
Um, it does allow extensions, so you can add sort of richer features, things like tabs, um, things like tables that look like they're proper tables, not with sort of minus and equal sign in, in, in an ASCII format. Um, we can create sort of banners with warnings or information type things. So there are a few um, extensions that we use to um, Markdown, but the idea is that anybody should be able to pick up the technology within a few minutes. Markdown is a technology that drives Git, so hopefully everybody should be able to get on board with that. Um, <clears throat> we've also been looking at using maybe GitHub automation to actually do the do the publishing. Um, that, that's what I do, and there are other communities I work with, and that's the way we've gone. So just pushing to the main branch will actually publish the update onto GitHub pages, which we can then use a C name to link to OKD.io. So it becomes a sort of maintenance free um, front door. And then we can then open it up to the community to really make that our own our, our, our front page, where we can actually start putting a lot more information on there. And um, the idea is that we want to consolidate. So we don't have content spread over multiple places. And it's a bit of a guess where this got put and um, competition to find anything. Um, so um, I did create on my own personal gate, a sort of a, a proof of technology that I took the um, the working group through last week. And um, if you go look at the replay, you'll actually see that. Um, I can probably post the link into the chat after I've finished. Um, but the idea is that we're now going to create a beta branch within um, the OKD repo. Oh. And that will then become a beta. Um, there's a lot of things that we need to work out in terms of the styling, the colors, how we want this, the, the site to look and feel. I think we want it to be a little bit simpler. There's a lot of bootstrap animation in there, which just adds complexity to the actual structure of the site. So we want to just make it a little bit simpler. Um, and I'll just, Brian, I'll let you know that um, I did talk to the, um, the folks who own, own or control the C name, and as soon as we're ready, they are quite happy to move um, the C name um, DNS over. So we just have to tr pull the trigger when you are ready. They're they're Definitely. actually thrilled that we're doing this. So um, one one less website for them to worry about. And, uh, there. Brian, can you throw the link in the chat, and then I'll put it into the meeting. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm just getting it now. Um. Uh, and while Brian's doing that, here's a quick link to, uh, or quick update on some other things that were added. So I pushed some changes and some other folks pushed some changes. Uh, community now goes to uh, the discussion functionality of the Git repo for OKD. Um, recipes is still there, but we talked about sort of merging that into some of the other documentation, um, like the guides. I thought, we, basically. I thought we had decided to get rid of recipes completely. I, I, I well, there, there is, there are two there, and so my thought was taking. So if you click on this, there's taking these two, uh, and then moving them into the the guide uh, section, like it's well, the, the development. Both guides. of those, both of those, maybe. Dale, too, if they are linking back to my GitHub. I had put those there just kind of as an example of how to make it work. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what that is. Yeah, we we either need to rally some community folks around um, reading more of those or... Um, I, I, I think the consensus was we are going to just stick with guides and... Um... The recipes stuff was there, so I would. Um, I you want to just chop it. this off right there. And, chop and that off and that. and take it off there and just keep it simple. Um, and there you go. It'd be mine. And then, uh, just, 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 sorry, yeah. just to follow up on that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm really interested in getting the Rooksef working on OKD. So it's where do we see that going? I know I, ideally we'd want a community operator that's in the OKD community operator hub eventually, but I, I think there are little things like that that will save people a lot of time 
when they're trying to set up an environment. So, so what, I'm, certain... I, what I might do, um, Charo, is e introduce you and your link here to Annette Cluett and Travis um, Nelson, the two folks behind Rook and um, that, and see if we can get um, someone from that community to work with us. Um, getting, you know, updating it, saying, hey, this is, you know, obviously out of date and, and a little stale. Um, is there anyone that you know there? If I did that email intro, Charo, can you walk them through what you've done? And then maybe we can get them to convert it into one of the guides rather than, um, they probably have, they've, they've done a ton of demos for me on OCP um, in the commons. Um, and know in combination so I think that might be the route and that would help and Brian I can CC you on that too if you're interested in that and then we can just start a thread with them because they may have a resource in the Rook community who has done it or is willing to do it with us rather than us making up as we go along not that we do that but so one thing we may want to be mindful of is so this right now and in the new site is installation and so these are deployment guides for actually deploying OKD. So we may want to uh, somehow modify this connect connection of ideas because once you start getting into deploying particular apps or particular technologies on the cluster, that's not the same thing as installing the cluster. So mm -hmm. we'll want to tease that out. Um, all right, so we'll be dropping this. Community was changed, blog. Documentation goes here. Now, does it make sense for us to select the version anymore if latest is always four and three is no longer supported? I mean, we can talk about this at the docs meeting, but I want to run this by a larger group. If you look at the beta site, I do. <laughs> that page is gone. We go, we just straight jump straight to the documentation. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so there's a new um, guide. That there are some things that. Available in the old version still and not on the new version. Like, how you, can you change ingress controllers and this kind of stuff? What you can do about that? Like a like like basically diffs between like explaining the differences. Do you mean or uh, no no uh, this uh, the ingress controller stuff doesn't exist in the uh, OKD four document. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, if someone wants to change that, what should they read? Where should they read it? Are, are you asking about changing out the ingress controller for a different ingress operator? Uh, no, no. Uh, in the docs of the OKD4, uh, there is no instructions about the ingress controllers and stuff. Uh, yeah, I, 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 if someone I, I, wants to I, I, change them, yeah, I think it assumes that you're going to use routes or routes rather than the Kubernetes ingress. Yeah, I think that is the assumption. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think the official Red Hat OpenShift documentation has instructions for using Kubernetes ingress if you choose to, but the, the preferred method is through the ingress operator with, with routes. So it... I mean, uh, maybe one thing we could do is create a document, and this again could be tackled at the documents meeting, but a document that outlines some of these changes for folks to help them get over to four and understand four. Just well, a quick I mean, document where we can throw ideas into it. But I mean, even um, if you go to straight to the documentation four, I don't know whether you can bring it up, if the link's in the chat to my site. Oh, whoops. Uh, did you put the link in the chat? Oh, I press enter. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I was like looking for it. Like, okay. So if you go to documentation there, <laughs> you land straight on four, right. but if you now hit the documentation breadcrumb link, mm, you get you back to the. So you yeah. still do have access to all of the previous versions. It's just that we land you in the full content now directly. That makes sense. 
And maybe during the docs meeting, we will have a discussion about maybe we could do a quick little one page, uh, you know, guide for folks coming from three uh, to four uh, about things like, you know, ingress controller versus operator and routes and stuff like that. Um, just little tidbits that might be helpful to, to help folks make that transition. And they can go back here if they if they want to still needing to work with three for some reason. All right, so this is, uh, yeah, let me go back here. So this is Brian's uh, example that he uh, provided. Got these on the side and it's got search and stuff. If you want, uh, the video will be posted um, in the next couple of days. Folks can watch the video of the meeting because Brian does like a whole walkthrough and it's cool. Right, so, um, uh, oh, and so this is, I was going to ask this to the larger group because it, it came up at the docs meeting and we sort of made an assumption, but now I'm wondering if maybe, if maybe it wasn't the best assumption. So the idea was, okay, we can put the meeting notes and other working group docs into the okd.io repo. The problem with that is, or not problem, but a, a complexity of that mean is that people who maybe have access to the site will also have access to the repo to make changes to meeting related stuff. And do we ever envision a time where there'd be people doing work on the website where we wouldn't necessarily want them putzing about with meeting notes and stuff like that? Or the, you know, any other like actual working group documentation? That's, that's a downside I see. I guess the question is, are we still going to maintain, I mean, I, I don't know what Red Hat policy is, but do we still have to maintain the sort of pull request model where a Red Hatter has to, or do we want an, an approver to have to approve any changes? I think that's probably a, a safe option. Yeah. So any changes to OKD becomes a pull request. What, what, uh, well, you and I have access to do approvals, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe we have three people, Diane, and then like two others, you know, so the co-chairs and then like third person like Brian, uh, and then three people can do approvals on those, then yeah, then that would avoid any any issues, I think, with someone accidentally clobbering stuff. Anyone else have thoughts on that? No? Okay. Uh, ta, 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 issues. So, uh. Let's see what's come in in the past couple days. Um. Uh, related to okay, so this is resolved through uh, okay, so here's a couple of CRC ones. Suddenly there was a uh, several uh, CRC. Uh, related issues which relate to build. We got those. Brian's. Okay, so nothing else new pending in terms of issues. And now going to discussion items. Oh, we have a new one. Yeah, I feel like we should, in discussions, we talked about this in the in the docs meeting, is uh, in discussions have like templates pop up. So when you select a like a Q&A, have a template pop up. So we'll have to do some investigation on how to get that set up. Because people really need to include log bundles a lot, um, or at least provide some basic 
like what version are you using? What um, cloud provider? That's a big one. Like what cloud provider are you? So, so, hey, this is John. So yeah, hey John. I, I've got a, a question about why this to me would seem to be an issue, you know. So I thought it would be open in issues and it's in discussions. Um, I guess I'm kind of confused as how how Vadim is. Um, because I've seen that he's moved a lot of stuff that seemed to be issues to me that should be in the issues portion into the discussion side. So we kind of lose that um, issue template type of thing. So do we have a do we have a, a rhyme or reason why we're putting issuey type things in discussion? I think, and don't quote me on this. I, I'd hate to speak for him, but my sense was he was getting a lot of stuff that was, um, or that in general the stuff coming into the issues queue was stuff that maybe wasn't an actual issue or people asking questions mm -hmm. that could be triaged um, uh, in a way that did not involve modifying code or bug fixes or anything. Mm -hmm. And then what he's been doing is, as I noticed, is if a discussion is, is sort of vetted to be something that's an actual issue, then he says, please file an issue uh, here. So that's how he's done it. But I mean, he's one person and, and we are the working group. And so folks should feel- I'm just curious, because I, I've seen that a lot of the issues have been moved to discussions, um, yeah. but it almost seemed to be the, the default. And I'm just wondering if that's how we really want to do it. Because well, to me, we... discussions are a higher level thing when we're talking about you know, install processes or, or, you know, or, or there's something that's affecting a lot of people, you know, that, you know, we have a, a lot of discussion on. Um, to me, that would, this one would be an issue, at least start off as an issue. But um, I was just curious, because I, I noticed that over the last few weeks that, that had happened. So I just wasn't sure if, if there was a decision made or something that had said, we're going to, we're going to put a lot of this stuff into the discussion. So I was just curious. I think that was something that he did. He can speak to it more. Do, do folks have thoughts on it in terms of, I mean, because so one of the things we want to do, any board or committee needs to do is sort of separate the needs of the group from like, okay, this one individual who needs to be in this position. Yeah, Jamie? Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess one question is, uh, are is issues intended to be bug reports? My sense is that's where he was going with this, is that issues right. I, is I think so. bug reports on code, yeah. Yeah, so in, in many cases, uh, when something happens to you, you don't know if it's your fault or a bug report, you know. So it's, it's reasonable to have a discussion first before you open an issue if issues are intended to be bug reports. Uh, and in the past, that's often been Slack where something like that and after some discussion, Vadim says, okay, open an issue, and then you go ahead and open an issue that's not gonna be immediately closed. Uh, but, and, and I think that we've sort of been moving that more to this discussions group. So I think that's sort of what's going on there. Um, okay, although ironically, that. like either way, no matter where it gets opened, it appears in, the, in uh, you know, if you've subscribed, then it appears in your inbox. Yeah, I, I, th I, thought, I thought one of the ideas we were trying to adopt is that the discussion area is where community members can, that, that's their initial meeting place. So if they want to ask for help, if they want to get clarification of things, going away from the, the support, this is the forum where community end user community members meet to sort of communicate with each other. Um, and then once we've identified that there is a, a potential bug, that then we will move it to the. Um, and I think we were we copied that from one of the other open source communities where we saw that they did exactly the same. They put the community link directly to their discussion. So I think that's where the idea came from. Okay, I, like I said, I was just curious. I, I noticed that over the last few weeks that um, what I what we were seeing as issues before. Are now are now going to discussions, and if that's the way we're going, I mean that makes sense. Um, yeah. But uh, maybe that's something that needs to be described or pinned somewhere that says before you open an issue, open a discussion first or something. If people don't know that. 
That's all I got. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, oh, that's great, John. Great. Minor follow up thing. Would it be worth it creating a separate category on the side there? A lot of people's like sort of support triage stuff is going under QA, which I maybe would be better served by having like a support category. I actually have no idea if GitHub lets you do that, but. So we would want different nomenclature because there's a, a strong, um, uh, I would say, push from Red Hat folks and the sponsors of OKD to not use the word support because yeah. then it implies that, that they are Fair entitled enough. to support with, with it. If we can come up with a different word. Mm -hmm. Challenges? Help. Help. Someone needs it, yeah, help, maybe just help. <laughs> Help as help versus support. Support sounds like there's a backing organization that's, you know, technical support. Help. Help is good. We do like community help, something like that. Something like that, yeah. All right, well, we'll throw that around a little bit more and see where it goes. Is anyone opposed to the idea of um, stuff going to discussion? And then issues getting filed afterward if it's determined to be an actual code issue. Anyone have any? Anyone not think it's a good idea? Feel free to share an opposing point of view. You can open a discussion about it. No. <laughs> I <was> a <laughs> oh. oh. All right. No. Well, not hearing anything. So let's uh, let's uh, and we'll have Vadim uh, at the next meeting maybe flesh out his thinking more. But pretty sure that's where he was going is trying to keep that as issues as just actual bugs. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, did we miss any? By the way, I should go back here and see. Okay, did you install fail yesterday? Um, oh. <laughs> uh, okay. And they're asking you to debug their log file. Yes. All right. Well, who wants what, to what, take that in? What organ can you go on to that person's profile? Oh, hold on. Just for a quick click through to see where. Um, no idea. This is their very first, their study. it's probably a student, I think. And it looks like it with study, yeah. I don't know. Okay. All right, well, we'll I'll take a look and, and other folks should take a look at as well. Um, Vadim's been like really strapped for time and if we can get more community members tackling these, that would be awesome. I mean, and if you don't have time to dig through someone's log, uh, that's understandable, but yeah. if anyone yeah. has some time. Yeah. Jamie, there may need to be a, a, a gentle reminder in the uh, Slack channels about calling people out directly. Um, there's been a few over the last few days directly yeah. to Vadim again. Yeah. And Vadim is sort of, um, sometimes he'll respond and just go with the flow. I mm -hmm. think it's if he knows the person maybe, but other mm -hmm. times he'll be like, you know, it's rude to tag me. I will post yeah. something again. Um, and we should maybe can put something in the description about that. Uh, oh, this is the same person. Both of these are the same discussion item. Why is he doing an OKD 4.5? Right, at some I point, know. are we going to say we don't support 4.5 and 4.6 anymore? We haven't really had that discussion. Actually, I had that on here before I knew that um, Vadim was going to be coming was a migration path outline and support um, outline and um, since he's not here, I don't know that we'd be able to have a, a, a technically informed discussion about it, but I do think that that's a good idea. I think it's probably a pretty easy answer, isn't it, in that we don't technically support any releases. Right? We, yeah. we will help yeah. with something we're familiar with, but, you know, I, I, I think it would be fair. I mean, well, recommend that they at least try it with a more more recent release. 
When was the first GA? Wasn't it the first GA four six or was it four five? I, mean, I don't remember. Four. We attach. Four four dot four or four dot three was the first GA. Four dot four maybe it was four four. But even then, like, there's no concept like of like separate release channels or anything like that for OCP. Right. The way there is with yeah. OCP. You just get a release on the train whenever Vadim puts it out, and you upgrade to it. Yep. So, yeah, I'm kind of a charo on this. I don't think we should we should encourage people to think that, oh, there are separate parallel supported release branches. I, I do think it would be helpful to have a migration path, because there are some people who are on, like, very urge, early, earlier, uh, earlier versions of OKD4, that want to be able to go to 4.7, and there are certain versions of 4.6 that do not go to 4.7, etc. And so I think having that matrix laid out would be helpful for folks that do want to get to the latest, but uh, in some versions there are blockers that don't allow you to go direct. So generally what happens, uh, Timothy Ravier here, speaking from the federal chorus side, uh, generally, what happens on OCP is that you update from one major to the next major. You don't skip major releases. So that's, uh, unless I'm completely missing something, that also applies to OKD. So I would recommend users move from 4.5 to 4.6, and then for 4.6 to 4.7, then 4.7 to 4.8 when that gets released. Uh, the general idea is that when you move from one release to the other, uh, you have some you move essentially from one Kubernetes release to the next one, and which means that some APIs get deprecated, some get uh, updated, some get removed. So you have to make sure that everything works, and you do that. And, and the etcd um, version changes, things like that. So the, the, the configuration may change. You want to make sure that every time you move from one release to the next one, you've fully updated all your configuration and everything until you, uh, before you move even further to the next one. You don't, you don't really, there's no support anywhere. We don't test that moving from one OCP release directly to another one, like skipping releases. So I would not recommend users do that. And on the other side of support, even though we don't, it's not support, uh, anything below 4.6 is completely even uh, unsupported on the Red Hat side. So uh, we're talking about anything, supporting anything below 4.6 in OKD is, uh, I'll say, completely not happening, most probably. Awesome, thank you. All right. Uh, uh, also, other... by the way, yeah, yeah no, just, just that uh, this is a 4.5 install fail, not an upgrade fail. So I think you could reasonably, you know, like uh, if the person is going off some blog post that is installing 4.5, a reasonable rejoinder would be to say, don't install that one. You know, you have to install at least, you know, X, Y, Z, and the current one is 4.7, you know, so try 4.7. Yeah, I th so for example, we have a, uh, in the uh, OpenShift users, there's a question that came in yesterday morning that is, is it correct that there is currently no migration path from current OKD 4.6 to a current 4.7? The last working migration seems to have been 4.6 to 14, 2021. Uh, I don't know that that's true. I'm pretty sure that more recent versions uh, I feel like I was able to upgrade. Yeah, I think there might have been issues with certificates and stuff that broke at a certain point. Yeah, but, but I that don't was... remember exactly when that was, and you had to do a force. I know that's what I've had to do. I haven't had to do it in a while, but I know there were a couple of versions where, because of, of tagging yeah. or search, you had to yeah. do a force. And that was early or late winter, basically early spring. But that was fixed within like it was like four weeks or so, or five weeks. That was all cleared out um, with a new release of four. Um, let me look into that and then I'll chat with Vadim as well and see if we can't come up with a clear answer on that. And I'll look back on some of the notes um, just so that we can respond to this question that's in the chat. I, and I, also seem to recall, I seem to recall working with people like in 
may you know that had issues with with doing certificates you know because they weren't they weren't tagged right or whatever but maybe it was before that time kind of compresses a little bit yeah I think it was the the upgrade issue with that was earlier than that yeah all right very cool um moving on now to um code ready container status so just to lay the the foundation for this discussion um we got two tickets in on code ready containers there's some things that need updating at the docs meeting there was a discussion um and actually at the last i think full group meeting a discussion about getting code ready containers uh up to snuff and having multiple people who can help with it uh to make sure that there's always um a updated release and that there's good documentation or whatever charo has been awesome uh it, it just like beyond belief in his support of uh, crc stuff um but his time is getting taken um by other great things and so it, it seems like something the community to handle i sent out an email uh well reach out to charo charo responded to me hey get round up any people who are interested and you know we can do a show and tell type thing mm -hmm. i sent something out we got an initial like eight people that are folks that are sort of in and out of the working group like in terms of participation and then we just in the past two days got eight responses from people that haven't really participated in the working group and any because this was posted i posted my email on the google group um, and so there's eight people who aren't really affiliated with the working group in, in terms of contributing to it or maintaining anything. So the thought is maybe this could be their entry point, but I think what we'll do is maybe take the first, because now it's like 16 people, take the first eight, which includes like myself, Mike McCune, a um, uh, uh, bunch of sort of the regulars that are here at this meeting and whatnot, We'll work with Charo and then from there, educate outward and, and come up with something so that this doesn't become something that Charo is burdened with. And that's the foundation, Charo. Go ahead and take it away from there, talking about what you want to do. Excellent. Okay, so I, <clears throat> I'm preparing documentation how I build code ready containers uh, for OKD. Uh, it's actually in the one of the links that I just posted. Um, there's very little documentation there. It's at, at this point just a, a bash barf of what I run through to build it. Um, what, what I'd like to do with the interested folks, uh, maybe if Jamie and Diane, if you guys could help coordinate like a, an ask me anything session with those folks James, yeah. we can we can take like an hour hour and a half I'll find some to carve out to, to one walk through how it works it's it's very automatable I just don't have a place to automate it uh, except in my home lab yeah. uh, and it is in that when the downstream, <laughs> the side stream project for Red Hat code ready containers makes code changes, it often breaks the OKD build. Uh, and so like for instance, um, I have a new release to push out this afternoon after I test the executables, make sure they work, but I had to make code changes to both the SNC project and the CRC project to get it to work again. So I'm going to submit a pull request them to, you know, so that it, it's refreshed for working with OKD. One of the things we're going to need to do as a community is get in tighter association with the engineers that are building Red Hat CRC. They're great guys, yeah. easy to work with. So they're not they're not going to have any problem with that. In fact, they'll welcome the help because I've actually a few bugs that we're going to bite them Red Hat Coro in. So they'll definitely be very welcoming of any additional help. But do you want to do this? Um, so I, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways we can do this. One, it might 
what but what helps for the um, the documentation process the best so that um, like that core group that Jamie was talking about we can host this as by by John I have one quick question for John before you go if you have a second or is he gone he might be gone well get him later um, so what I was hoping was a just to facilitate this like we can do this as an open shift commons briefing and you can walk through what you've done um, the other question I have is when where you get the code from the red hatters um, how public is the code to do these builds like are you being oh, gifted it, is it no it's totally it's totally open source uh, here okay. I'll, I'll I'll post it actually I think if you scroll scroll down just a little bit let's see no scroll up I'm sorry uh, find the git clones right there the last two lines in the section above Git clone, yeah, the, okay. The two Git clones, yeah, yeah right yeah. there. Yeah. That, that's where that's where the code is. So, um, SNC builds the single node cluster that you then tear down and build a QCAL uh, disk image out of, and then you and then you compile CRC. CRC is written in Go. You compile CRC and embed the QCAL image in CRC. That's how you get code ready containers. It's basically a stripped down disk image of a single node cluster virtual machine that's been shut down and and then bundled with the with the CRC executable that allows you to start it and stop it and magic with it. Yeah. So um so to do and this is for Jamie too. So if we were gonna we could do an AMA on this where, and I don't know when you'd be ready for it, but any Friday, like we would do for a community office hour, we could do this any Friday at 9 a.m. And we could also live stream it on Twitch and invite everybody to it. But I could host it sort of as, rather than blue jeans like this, there's another blue jeans, level of blue jeans, blue jeans events, where you, know, you have a bunch of you guys are, and gals, whomever we can coerce, being the presenters. And then there's a Q&A, Q so that they can ask questions and you can answer them as you go. Um, and that's, I think that's a better facility for this. It's actually better than the Zoom because it actually lets you queue up the questions and ask them and records the questions and answers. Um, if, and I, I mean, even this Friday, I could do it at 9 a.m. if you were ready to do it and we could invite everybody who came. And then maybe what we do is make the core group of people that Jamie was refer referring to as co-presenters so that they, their faces could be on stream and everybody else who asked about it, um, just invite them to come um, and watch as you went, went through it. If you're ready for this Friday or the following Friday, whenever. Um, Let's tentatively plan for the following Friday. I'm actually taking off work from my day job <laughs> Thursday and Friday. I had to defer my recharge day. <laughs> So, so I'm actually taking off from from my day job Thursday and Friday and Monday. So um, that's the 27th. You're thinking? Yeah. So I'm I'm actually planning to. The reason I went ahead and posted this in my new blog site um, was to go ahead and get it out there for a few people that have been asking me directly about it. And my plan over the weekend is to finish documenting it. Um, so that it's it's a little more polished. I'm actually going to drop it as a blog post as well. Mm -hmm. So next Friday, then we. Um, Why don't we try for for, for the the following Friday, and I can put it on the calendar as an OpenShift Commons briefing, OKD working group, whatever thing. So it'll get some other eyeballs as well. And then the group of people, Jamie, if you can send me that list, I will make them co-presenters for you okay. and. Mike and everybody else in in the event um, so that you can be on screen and you can add your two cents. And it's not all Charo talking all the time and maybe and just work it through it. And if you need to take more than an hour, like if it takes two hours to do it, that's fine, too. Um, does it does it have to be nine Eastern? Friday? Nine, no, it's um, that would be noon Eastern. Oh, noon nine Eastern. Eastern. Now, I live in Pacific Standard Time. Me and Bruce over here, where are the... Uh, yeah, I was wondering, when you said nine, I was thinking, you're not... 
I can do noon Eastern, but I have to be done. I will have to drop at one, even if you're not done. Okay. I, I can actually. Yeah, it, it's, it would be good if we could try and do it in an hour, but that's um, that's fine with me. And I'll, I'll book it and, and do that. So um, that's cool. I am putting it on my. You, you'll get an invite, calendar invite from me shortly. I'm just going to make another okay. note. I've also got uh, uh, actually another internal Red Hatter that Who's interested it? as well. Who is that? So that we uh, can. His name is Brett. Just a minute. Uh, Brett um, Tofel, T O F E L. He's a uh, he's one of the senior software engineers that's actually working on OLM stuff. So I also talked to him about running around and beating, gently beating some of our community operator developers over the head, get them to start building the operators um, with the container images as manifests instead of tags. Cool. All right, we'll keep beating them over the head with that noodle eventually, okay. And this is definitely, looking this over, this is definitely very easily automatable. Um, and I think if we just find a uh, server or even a cluster, this could be done on a cluster um, that's willing to host it, and I may be able to do that, um, then we could just have this automatically um, doing, you know, continuous builds. And when it fails, we go, oh, something upstream broke this. And then we can go upstream and say, hey, uh, you know, this is going to break OKD CRC. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. It, it's actually it's a it's a three step process. The one piece that I haven't added to it yet is kind of a, a sanity check in between the two steps to ensure that the cluster is healthy. And, and actually, if we if we get this running somewhere with a with a CI/CD process, um, hey, pause for just a minute because if you at the very top of this code block that you're on, see that curl command. That's actually grabbing as a, and setting as an environment variable because it's passing as an argument the current release of OKD. So this this thing running would actually be be running continuous build tests of OKD. It, it's it's using a libvirt IPI build, so you know it's not testing AWS or GCP sure. or that, but it still would be a good sanity check of a current or an upcoming OKD release to ensure that it can build all the way up to a running single node cluster. I like this. This is good. Thank you, Chara. This is great. All right. Yeah, so looks like we got our work cut out for us. We've got 10 minutes left in the meeting, so let's see if there's anything else we need to I get to. One more thing on the agenda, um, just because I'm just curious if anybody who's on the call or anybody who's watching this afterwards is um, going to plan on attending KubeCon um, and would be willing or interested in giving an end user case study talk at Commons on the day before KubeCon at the same location. It's co-located there. Um, please ping me. Um, I'm looking for more um, folks to chat and um, to share their stories. So if you have one and you're planning on going, it is planned to be a hybrid event. Um, so just in case they, they close us down and we can't be in person in, in LA, I'm, I am going to host it on Hopin. So if you have a story that you want to share, um, let me know, reach out to me, my email's there. Um, I'd be happy to have a, um, an OKD, another OKD story on the menu um, at that event. Um, trying to close the agenda by the end of this month, so um, let me know soon. So, Jamie, if you've got one, or Bruce, or Brian, or I know you guys are home labby kind of folks um, for a, a large part, but um, and that's what I was going to hit John Fortin about, see if we can get Market America on stage. So, um, somebody, we got Rody and Schwartz last time, but then he disappeared from the working group afterwards because he got too busy. So, um, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. But anyways, that was my ask. So if you have um, or you know of somebody who might be willing um, in your travels, Charo, um, that's, we're up and we're on the hunt again. 
and it's it, it's it's looking like it will happen in person, KubeCon. So um, get your seat belts ready and your travel packs, and we'll see if Canada lets me out of the country. Excellent. All right. Uh, the other thing that we sort of skipped over um, is uh, Kitty operator catalogs. Vadim isn't here, but what I wanted to find out is what the status was of the internal effort to, there's like a handful of operators actually that um, there's an internal effort to put into a community version um, such as uh, serverless and um, pipelines and whatnot. I don't know what the status of that is. I was going to ask Dean, but it'd be good to find out. Um, and then also where the community can start. So the idea is that um, if we go to the tagged issue up here, the wish list, um, you know, these are the ones that are currently unavailable. And when I asked Vadim about it, he mentioned that there's an internal effort on these. Um, it'd be nice to know where that's at and, and who we might need to bug to, to get that moving forward because there's a lot of requests for these, you know, and you can do the, the you know, install from scratch but it's nice to be able to have it show up in, uh, uh, I, in your list of operators. I also think that's a key inhibitor to people adopting OKD because yeah. with OCP, if I can go and set up my full cloud native environment in a, less than an hour. I've not yet managed that on OKD because every operator I hit, it's... Yeah. It, it's a little bit of a challenge and I'm gradually trying to work through things and but it's if it was as easy as it was on OCP I think we get a lot more usage of OKD. Sure. So here's a good example right like if you've got a production cluster or even a, a, a true you know dev cluster where you really want to monitor stuff um, or QA or anything you're going to want uh, persistent logging through the operators. Well, you need these two to get OpenShift um, logging going, right? You need the Elasticsearch and the cluster logging operator together installed. Um, and again, you can do it manually, but it's, it, it's a big difference um, being able to go through the hub uh, and the catalog and be able to get those in. Um, serverless, same thing. Uh, the GitLab operator uh, as well. So. All right, let's put that on the agenda for um, next meeting and we'll get an update on that and see who we can talk to about sparking a little fire uh, to get those done. The other thing that I wanted to get a sense of from Vadim or whomever, uh, Christian isn't here either, but what can we do to start these ones that need to get um, need to be made available like pipelines and stuff like that like do we just select a, uh, a handful of people to tackle it um and and th this group i think needs to think about what we can do to start a process of roping people in or getting people to be getting people to volunteer to get these operators built uh and into catalogs uh, i think i think one of the challenges that the i'm encountering is the build process seems to be this sort of mythical thing within Red Hat that, that, we, they, that it's not easy to find out from an outside in point of view of how they build them. And um, often there are um, secondary sort of containers that are in the entitled registry. So I'm looking at the Gitty, that someone has actually gone and done a great Gitty operator and it works on OCP but it uses the RBAC proxy from registry.redhat.com. So I can't put it on a KD because it's, it's got that entitled registry um, container. And it's, it's then, I've now got to go and work out how to recompile that and, and, and do it. So I, I, I think there's a lot of cases like that where there is some internal dependency within Red Hat. I don't know whether it's intentional but we sort of hit that sort of external. Yeah, the, the, challenge, the, the challenge that I'm seeing as I've worked with a few of the um, operator communities is that I think it's less 
that there's an internal process and more that there isn't a um, each of because each of the operators start you know start their lives as an upstream project and the way they're built um, doesn't follow a convention much less a standard and, and so if you know if the person that started working on like for example the get t operator if if they were in a, a entitlement base and they're pulling from registry they just didn't realize they were hard locking it and it required us instead of using the the Quay.io version of the exact same um, container. But I've, I've had to do surgery on, on, a, on a few and then open issues to say, hey, you might want to use this image instead of that one. I think um, the Tecton operator would be one that we'd really want to get um, you know, pipelines actually working because uh, that's something that's sort of fundamental, right, is getting that pipeline working. When that says yeah. available in the upstream catalog, does that, does that literally mean there is an upstream catalog you can enable and you can go get it, or does that mean go to this, go to this GitHub? I think it, it means, means you to... need to have the entitled pull right. secret. Oh, okay. Um, I'll... I'll post and it, it. It's actually really easy to build the Tecton operator for OpenShift um, and install it. It, it. You can do it in just a few commands with a with a few dependencies. If you have a, a Go development environment set up on your Linux or MacBook, I haven't tried it from Windows because I don't have any Windows. So I can at least for people that are waiting for Tecton, I can close that gap pretty quickly because I I've been running it for a while and. That'll be really helpful. I that will. Yeah, I, actually, I was waiting until next week for my weekly blog post to get Tecton running. And, oh, it and does actually blog. look pretty straightforward. Yeah, it, it it is. There's there's a couple of undocumented steps that you need to do to set some environment variables, uh, but okay. it will actually build and then push it. It'll push the images to whatever registry you want it to push them to, and then it will apply the the crds and manifest to your openshift cluster so charo can you make um a, a, a pull request or log an issue against this document to add in those things that are yeah yeah i'm going to okay i want to be mindful of folks time because we're at the hour so let's call it and then we've we've got our homework uh set out for us um uh, up until the next meeting and Charo, uh, thank you so much for helping with CRC and helping with um, operators and, and uh, doing that legwork for us. Um, very much appreciated. I've definitely got one last thing. Oh, yeah. Um, Diane, can we update the Slack headers to stop pointing people at the Google mailing what, list for technical what link, support? What link do you want me to replace? If, can you could... If you go to the Slack communities, you added in that block at the top as part of the channel description. Yeah, saying, I did. For technical support, go to the Google groups. <laughs> what would you What would you like it to read? Let's Let's come up with something on the mailing list or, okay. or in chat, yeah. and then we'll we'll yeah. hack at Just that. Give yeah. me something to cut and paste, and I will cut and paste. Okay. Um, and we'll just do that. Let's go. Right. Okay. All right, I have a couple of things I have to do for you guys right away. So um, look for those, um, the blue jeans thing to come out, Charo, with you and Jamie. And um, I'll, I'll include Fred Tofel in there too, just to scare him. Um, <clears throat> and then I told him it was coming because I, I talked to him this morning. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, I like scaring our red hatters. <clears throat> Thanks again, um, Jamie, for doing this. And um, it's always a pleasure. Take care, guys.